Hello everyone, I'm Christy Lynn from Learning the Hub and I'm so excited to introduce to you my friend and student Eve. Hello. And today we're going to be talking about Eve's story of Learning the Hub. If you have ever felt that pull, that unexplainable pull to play the harp and you just feel a little afraid and you're not sure how that's going to play out, I think you'll find Eve's story really encouraging. <music> So tell us, how did you come to playing the harp? Oh, well, actually, it took me by surprise. And the surprise was that many years ago, actually in 2005, I felt such a drawing and such a pulling, and I knew that it was a divine drawing and pulling to learn how to play the harp. Well, it was rather intimidating. So I set it aside for several years and then in December of 2017 that same overwhelming feeling of it's time to purchase the harp and it's time to learn how to play it and mm -hmm. really believe that I could do it because I had a divine calling to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what were you meant to be doing with the harp when you say you had a divine calling? Why the harp and how did that fit together with what you're meant to do. I think the harp specifically because the harp is such a beautiful instrument and it can be played with much complexity mm -hmm. or thankfully for me it can be played with much simplicity and so this the harp is a perfect complement to the songs that have been given to me oftentimes after prayer and so the songs are very mm, soothing and they sound even more soothing with the harp. Mm -hmm. So tell us a bit more about those songs. What kind of songs and how do they come to you? The songs generally are songs that uh, create a space of emotional healing. Um, it's a, it's, there are, they are songs that create and foster an environment of peace and of mm -hmm. hope. And so, like I said a little while ago, most of the time the songs will come to me either during prayer time or immediately after prayer time. When hope is hard to come by And you keep drying your tears Look deep into What is it, has that journey been like for you now? What's the most recent news? What have you done with those songs? Well, um, I have the privilege of playing these songs and singing these songs at a senior facility, a senior apartment community. And so the ladies are so sweet. And so they look forward to me visiting them every other month. And so I have sang these songs there at that facility, but I also sang these songs at a house church. But I've been saying to Eve, even this morning we were working on an accompaniment of a song, not one of your songs, but an accompaniment, and she was saying, I just don't understand why me, and like, I don't have the background to be able to do this. And I think that's maybe an encouragement for some people watching the video. What I said was, you have the heart, and you have, you have this inside you that you want to share something. You want to bless people through these songs. Mm -hmm. And the music you can learn. You know, it's, it's maybe easier to learn the music than to find that, that heart. And actually that reminds me of something similar that Edie Elkin from Bedside Harp said. She said, about, she said that about harp therapy. She'd rather have the right person. She can teach them the music. And that's, I guess, similar to what I was saying to you, is that actually it doesn't have to be complicated. And you can learn that this time. Um, but having that heart to share with people is the right place to start. Um, and it's very exciting. It is. So who knows what the future will hold. We've, we've talked about ideas of maybe sharing the songs so that other people could also learn to sing these songs. Um, maybe we will record one of them for the YouTube channel. We'll just have to see what happens. Yeah. Um, but I think the exciting part is that the Lord is working. Oh, and massively, yes. Uh -huh, he's giving you these songs and we can already see that it's working in people's lives. It is. Yeah. Mm. Whisper to us, whisper to us, whisper to us, Jesus whisper to us. So something
thing that I think some people will be able to relate to is what you said about feeling feeling like, why me? Or that there were some barriers inside you and you waited a lot of years before going with something that you felt like you need to do. There's significance behind this. So tell us a little bit more about those barriers that you felt inside you. Not knowing uh, how to read sheet music, not having any uh, educational background in music theory, and not knowing how to play an instrument. So that's in those years where you knew you should be doing this, but you were kind of pushing back against it. Is that what was going through your mind? Like, yes. I don't know. I don't have a musical background. I don't know how to read music. Um, why me? <laughs> yes. Well, and then I didn't, I didn't, how was I to find a harp teacher? And how, mm -hmm. how was I to know that that would be the right harp teacher? Mm -hmm. And so, and then how would I make a decision in regards to which harp to buy? Mm -hmm. So the consultation that we had was mm -hmm. perfect because then I could ask you questions and I could see your reaction when I said, so I have all these songs and they're very simple and they just come to me. Mm -hmm but I need to have harp accompaniment with them. I needed to see that reaction. Mm -hmm. I can't um, even remember how I reacted, but I'm sure I was excited. <laughs> you were cool as a cucumber. <laughs> and I thought, well, okay, that's a good reaction. She's cool as a cucumber. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, so that was it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, trying to decide which harp to purchase, I decided on this harp here, the mm -hmm. uh, Ravenna uh, 26. 26. It's been good. Yeah. It's perfect. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. It's it's small enough that I could pack it up and take it to play for the ladies, for the senior ladies, mm -hmm. and to the home churches that I visit. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. I really wouldn't want anything bigger to tote around. Mm -hmm. This is perfect. Yeah, it's been so great for you. Um, Did you also feel like you were too old? I think I remember you saying that. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> like, who does this at my age? Really? <laughs> who does this? <laughs> So, you know, but then I think about Abraham and Sarah. Mm -hmm. Oh, they were so old and they were promised a child. And everything around them and everything that their logic would tell them would say, this is not possible. <laughs> Correct. Mm -hmm. To them, it was impossible. Mm -hmm. But absolutely for God, nothing is impossible. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that it's not difficult. Mm -hmm. It is but I know that there is grace to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's sheer divine empowerment that keeps mm -hmm. me going and keeps me motivated. Mm -hmm. It truly is. And it's so funny to me because I had that same thought at the age 25, thinking I'm too old. And now that's like laughable because I'm constantly hearing about people in their 70s, 80s starting harp for the first time. And they would think I was super young or you were young when you started. <laughs> um, but when we don't see that, we don't have these kind of videos necessarily to tell us, actually, there's other people going through the same thing. Um, we can feel like we're crazy to think of this idea. And you've spoken about that too. When you tell people, <laughs> I'm learning the harp. <laughs> I get some very strange looks. <laughs> I, d I just, you know what? It's, it's water off a duck's back in my case because I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, you don't know the journey I've been on. I am gonna do this, by golly. I'm going to do this. Whatever barriers in my way, I'm going to knock it down. It may take some time, but I will get there. So I don't say anything. I just smile and go on my happy way. <laughs> and sometimes they ask, where's your harp teacher? Oh, yeah, a lot. I say, <laughs> South Africa. And then the look on their face is total, total bewilderment and confusion because they say, how can that happen? And then I say, oh, but it happens over the computer through this thing called Zoom that I had no idea existed. <laughs> so that tells you right there, my I'm not high techie. So what would you say to somebody if they are feeling this pull to playing the harp and it feels like there's a significant purpose and they just haven't done it yet because they're afraid? What would you say? Don't ignore it. Don't ignore the pull because as time goes on, then it turns into a sense of, of that feeling of being pulled. It turns into... If I don't do this, what could have happened that I could have been a part of? And then I'm in the position of, I regret that I did not pay attention to that pull. It doesn't matter how significant, it doesn't matter how, how complex we play or how mm -hmm. simple we play. What matters is that we don't ignore that pull. We don't mm -hmm. ignore that sense that 
I know that I'm supposed to do this, and then mm -hmm. come up with all kind of justifications and excuses as to why we can't do mm -hmm. it. Because we'll talk ourselves out of it. Mm -hmm. We will talk ourselves out of it. Mm -hmm. But then there's always this nagging thought in the back of mm -hmm. our minds. What would have happened if I would have done that? Mm -hmm. Why am I feeling this pull? Yeah. So if you're feeling that pull, there's nothing different about you compared to Eve. You know, you were saying there's so many reasons why it doesn't make sense. It might feel the same for you, but there's a reason why you're feeling that pull. Go with it, because I don't think you'll regret it. It may not be easy. That's right. But you won't regret it, because there's a reason why you're feeling that pull. Yes. Thank you so much for telling us your story. I think that's really beautiful. And I know that some of you who are watching might have your own story about why you want to play the harp and the significance behind that. And I would love to hear that story. Maybe we'll even tell some of those stories to Eve. She would love to hear it too. So please email us at hello at learningtheharp.com. I'll put that on the screen now. And it'll also be down in the description box. Please tell us your stories because I think that would just be so wonderful. Um, and then also make sure you subscribe to this channel on YouTube called Learning the Harp because we put up new videos all the time to help you in your harp journey. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.